morning, everyone, and happy, happy Sunday. So today, as requested, um, someone asked that I speak on this topic of VRE. So let's begin. So what is VRE and what causes it? So VRE stands for vancomycin resistant enterococci. Van vancomycin is an antibiotic to which some strains of enterococci, which are bacteria that normally live in the intestine and in the genital tract and every human being, they are also present in soil and water, have become resistant. They are bacteria that evolved from MRSA. These resistant strains are referred to as VRE. To understand how antibiotic resistant bacteria like VRE emerges, it, is, it helps to first understand how bacteria and fungi change in response to medicines designed to kill them. According to the CDC, germs naturally evolve constantly and can be developed and can develop new ways to avoid the effects of antibiotics. Once that happens, the resistant germ survives and starts to multiply, and the surviving germs, which now have resistant traits to their DNA pass on this genetic information to subsequent generations. These resistant germs can continue to spread and pose an increasing, an increasing threat to people's health. So what are some of the signs and symptoms of this VRE? VRE infections cause a range of different symptoms depending on the location of the infection. Again, VRE can affect the bloodstream, it can affect the urinary tract and wounds associated with surgery. So people may have fever, chills, body aches, rapid pulse and breathing, nausea and vomiting, diarrhea, decreased urination. UTI and its symptoms includes frequent or intense urge to urinate, pain or burning sensation while urinating, cloudy, dark, bloody or foul smelling urine, lower back pain, flank or abdominal pain. Wound infection can cause soreness and swelling at the wound site, red, warm skin around the wound, pus or fluid leakage from the wound. So who is at risk and how is it diagnosed? People who have been previously treated with antibiotics, including vancomycin, for long periods of time are at risk. People who are hospitalized have undergone surgical procedures or have medical devices inserted in their bodies, such as catheters. People with weakened immune systems, such as patients in intensive care units or in cancer or transplant, transplant wards. To confirm a VRE infection, your, the doctor will send a sample of the infected wound blood, or urine, or stool to the lab for analysis. At the lab, the, te the technicians will grow the bacteria and test to see which antibiotic can kill the bacteria. If vancomycin can't kill it, that confirms the existence of VRE. So what are the treatment and medication options for VRE? When someone develops VRE infection, doctors typically turn to antibiotics that are alternatives to vancomycin to identify which antibiotic might be best to treat a specific infection, the physician will get further testing and then determine which antibiotic may be effective at killing the germ. Some vancomycin alternative medicine that may be used include ampicillin, just to name one. People who carry VRE in their bodies without any symptoms of infection or other problems will not need any treatment. So how can you avoid getting this infection? If you or someone in your household has VRE, and even if you don't know if someone has an infection, it's important to you protect yourself. One of the most effective ways is through proper hand washing. And tarcoccus can live on hands for as long as 60 minutes after contact and as long as four months on innate surfaces. Patients and their caregivers should wash their hands with soap and water again, or even use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer, particularly after using the bathroom, before and after handling medical devices or caring for wounds, and before pre preparing meals. Sometimes some of us take for um, granted when we're taking care of loved ones that, that may be ill or bedridden and they have a bowel movement, we use our bare hands. No, you must use, you should use gloves. That's important as well to protect yourself and make sure that you're washing your hands before and after. Frequently cleaning areas at, at the home, such as the bathrooms, that may become contaminated with VRE. Wearing gloves if hands may come in contact with body fluids, just as I stated, that may contain VRE, such as stool or bandages with infected wounds. Always wash your hands after removing your gloves. Informing healthcare providers if you are someone you care 
or so, or if you or someone you care for has VRE, so that appropriate precautions can be taken to prevent the spread. I wanted to also add something to this. So if you go to a hospital and you see a patient with an isolation sign, it's important that as family members and visitors that we adhere to those protocols, not only for the patient, but also for yourself and those that you may go home to. So what are some of the complications? While VRE can remain harmless in the body, it can also multiply and wreak havoc. The bacteria can invade the bloodstream and cause a wide variety of illnesses, including bacteremia, which is bacterial infection that has spread to the bloodstream, urinary tract infection, endocarditis, which is infection of a heart valve, meningitis, wound infection, pneumonia, intra-abdominal infections, pelvic infections, skin and soft tissue infections. It is important to note that these complications can also be caused can, can be caused by something unrelated to VRE infection. So make sure that this is being diagnosed by a provider. Related conditions of VRE. Conditions that may re resemble those caused by VRE infections, but may not necessarily be caused by this bacteria or bacterial sepsis. Other hospital acquired infections, endocarditis, peritonitis, and abdominal sepsis, septic arthritis, UTI, and wound infection. So again, it can mimic it, so you have to make sure that it is being diagnosed appropriately. So some things I want you to remember. People who are more likely to have VRE include those who have been treated with antibiotics, including vancomycin, particularly for long periods of time. Individuals who have been hospitalized, particularly in, who have had surgery or have had medical devices, such as catheters inserted in, in their body. People who have weakened immune systems, such as those who have a long-term illness or are in intensive care units or cancer or transplant wards for hospital. In many cases, someone may carry VRE in their bodies and not develop any symptoms. It's also possible for someone to get sick, have the infection go away, but still have the bacteria remain in their bodies without any problems. And sometimes someone who gets sick from VRE infection can get better, only to have the infection come back later. People with an active infection can be treated with, uh, with antibiotic, and the infection may go away. People who are colonized with VRE may have it for a long time again. Please talk to your healthcare provider for more information as it relates to this. So I'm going to give special acknowledgement to the CDC, to the cent to Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the Mayo Clinic, New York State Department of Health, the National Institute of Health for the information that I provided to you today. I thank you so much for your time. I thank you so much for your, for your attention. I hope this was helpful, especially for the person that I'm, that I'm asked. God bless you, enjoy the rest of the service. And Brother Rob and Sister Althea, thank you so much for sharing your testimony. I'm sure you encouraged someone today. God bless.